you may or may not have heard that Kanye West is running for president. Now, apparently, I, I, I noted that he had changed his name, and I, his name is now just the letters Y-E. No last name, no middle name, Y-E, two-letter full name. I pronounced this Yee. I said, that's a funny name. It wouldn't be funny if he ran with someone named Old, E Old, for president. Apparently, Kanye's new name is Ye, Y-E pronounced Ye, which is like fish spelled G-O-T-I levels of fucking retard butchering of the English language, of the American language, I apologize. Um, I, I refuse to call him Ye. Ye means cocaine in Spanish to me. I'm not going to call him Ye. I'm going to call him Kanye because that is fucking stupid. Um, Kanye, of course, is just as a brief primer, he is like a hip hop artist. He put out many different songs, many albums that people consider very strong. And then in 2010s, he started having like a mental health crisis. I really don't know how else to explain this. He started watching anime. He broke up with Kim Kardashian. Um, he, he had a lot of episodes and a lot of meltdowns. He started being like pro-Trump during the Trump administration, which a lot of people were not very positive for. But however, he still during that time had his head screwed on straight. And he put out an album, which was sort of like a, a I don't want to say a rap battle because it wasn't. Because the, the, it's not like a, it's not like a traditional rap battle where it's like people just making fun of each other or whatever the fuck. It, it was sort of like a debate in rap form. And it was actually pretty good. It was like Ye versus the people. Or yay versus the people. And it was a, it was a decent song at a, a appropriate time. Um, fast forward a couple years, and now it's 2022. The midterms just happened, and this is traditionally in American politics. After the the the, the Congress gets reelected every two years uh, in some states, so um, or sorry, Congress gets reelected every two years, and some Senate seats are come up every two years. So Senate Senate's terms are six years, presidential terms are four years, congressional terms are, are two years. Every two years, Congress gets reelected. The midterms between presidential elections, some Senate seats come up, all congressional seats come up, and this the the after the midterms is when the presidential race starts. So now you have Trump coming out saying he's running for re-election. Kanye comes out and says he's running for president. So yay, 2024 uh, officially starts. He onboards Milo Yiannopoulos as his campaign manager and Nick Fuentes as his communication director. And from his retelling, what has happened is that he, when he put out a tweet saying DEFCON 3 to the Jews, um, someone, an unnamed person, put him into contact with Milo, Milo Yiannopoulos. And Milo is a fed. Um, I want to say that with a high level of certainty. I, I try to give people a benefit of a doubt, but I am pretty sure, um, I, well, I'm, I'm not pretty sure, I'm certain that Milo is a Fed because in 2020, uh, before January 6th, Milo put out a tweet saying that he would not be going to the January 6th protest. He had, re he had p posted a FBI um, business card and said, the Feds came to my door and told me, don't go to January 6th. And then he said, don't go to January 6th. If you value your freedom, don't go to January 6th. He did not go up to January 6th. He's the only person who managed to get out of that with the skin on his teeth. So somebody puts Kanye in touch with Milo. They hit it off. Milo, despite having Milo having no accomplishments, Milo was bankrupt like a couple of years ago. He literally filed for bankrupt. He broke up with his black boyfriend. He's, he's like a Jewish ex-gay um, that has converted to Christianity, quote unquote. And he has literally nothing to show for his entire career. Started as a Breitbart writer, made nothing of it. Had lots of money during Gamergate and during the Trump era as being the token gay, black-loving, conservative guy, Jewish guy. And then he went bankrupt because everyone got bored of his bullshit. Somehow, he managed to get a hook in immediately with Kanye. And then the first person that Milo Yiannopoulos says you should get in contact to, to Kanye West trying to get into presidency in 2024, Nick Fuentes. So here's my theory. Um, I believe that Nick Fuentes is compromised. And I believe this because after January 6th, the, the tone of his show changed dramatically. Um, I think that Nick, Milo was compromised and he got another compromised person in so that this campaign is going to be a complete disaster and hit all the right notes required to um, harm whatever message could possibly come out of this. Um, so Nick Fuentes' whole thing after, 20, after January 6th kind of shifted from a very serious, like, we're going to be conservative, we're going to be Christian, we're going to take back the country, to more oriented towards, like, incel shit. Very explicitly incel shit. And what's very curious is that after Biden got in, um, incel terrorism 
was listed by the Department of Justice as being a top concern for the country. So as soon as Biden gets in and Nick Fuentes is involved in the January 6th shit, tangentially, I don't think he was actually at the protest, but I think he was nearby. Um, and then suddenly he starts very strongly pushing for incel shit and telling, like, adopting the term incel and pushing this, like, um, like sterile idea of what his, his idea of a country is. And it's just bizarre. So I think Nick Fuentes is also towing a line for, uh, for the government. He was there. Yeah, he was there. Um, so just really bizarre. And now Kanye is in a total meltdown. This, this thing is, is a meme. I'm blaming it on anime, but I'll, I'll get to my real theory here in a second. Um, so it starts out with Laura Loomer condemning this because she's Jewish. And unlike Milo, she is not like an ex-Jew. She is um, still very much like pro-Israel, pro-Judaism. Pro like there, there, there is a place for Judaism and conservatism in, in the U.S. That's her, her line. It's the neocon kind of take, very, very flaccid. Um, but then she's posting these DMs of Kanye, Milo saying Kanye is gay. Don't make me keep saying it. Most rappers are homos, especially the new crop. That, um, Kanye is a pretty pathetic figure now. He got out froze by a beard. And this is all in 2022. This is not years ago. Kanye is a very gifted homosexual. I'd kill Kanye because he's gay. Back when Kanye was cool, especially the black homosexual Kanye West. Kanye was late filing, didn't pay fees all over the place, independent minded and bankrupted the 50 cent. Uh, at least Kanye likes white guys. Um, Milo is still gay like i don't know if you're one of those people who think that gay people can find salvation and then become not gay good on you but the, i i even in that case they still keep the gaydar and he's saying for sure if you listen to him talk he has a pretty like effeminate voice i was surprised by how he sounded i thought his rapping voice would be more uh lighter than his talking voice but no he talks very very lightly um and so laura loomer comes out with this drops this immediately and then, as Nick Fuentes is being spotted around Kanye West, who just said DEFCON 3 to the Jews, it is time for a Hollywood humiliation ritual aimed at Nick Fuentes. So this is Jimmy Kimmel. This is the only time ever I have played Saturday Night Live as a clip for, this, uh, for my little podcast, but I don't know how I can avoid doing this. He's an election denier. He's an anti-vaxxer. He's all the bad things. But I think this more than anything sums this gentleman up. Why people call me gay because I've never had a girlfriend. I think if anything, if anything, it makes. I thought Jimmy Kimmel Live was was Saturday Night Live. Whatever, I don't give a fuck. This is Jimmy Kimmel. Gentlemen up. Why people call me gay because I've never had a girlfriend. I think if anything, if anything, it makes me less gay. Never having a girlfriend, never having sex with a woman, really makes you more heterosexual. Because honestly, dating women is gay. Having sex with women is gay. And having sex with men is gay. And, and, you know, it's really, it's all gay. <laughs> that was the Christmas episode, by the way. He, the Fuentes made a statement today saying Trump didn't know who he was and he didn't mean to bring any negative attention. Um, if your position is so weak that you can be trotted out on Jimmy Kimmel Live and made a mockery of, and have the audience genuinely, this is probably the funniest bit on Jam Jimmy Kimmel Live in his entire show's history. If you can genuinely be made a fucking laughing sock on Jimmy Kimmel Live, you are not doing your job well. You are not a serious person. You're not a serious leader. Uh, if you, if they can just play you saying having sex with women is gay. I, I still, it's been a year, that, that clip has floated around a lot. I still have no fucking idea what he is trying to say i think the the groiper cope about it is that any premarital premarital fornication is equally sinful in the eyes of like strict biblical law fornication sex out of wedlock is equally sinful as sodomy is and that's what he's trying to say if that is the case and i guess you could make that case if you're really trying hard to defend nick fuentes that is the worst, most retarded way to word that ever. It does not make me think that you have a deep understanding of the Bible and sin and your relationship with God. It makes me think that you're fucking retarded, uh, which, as I said, is not a good thing. So he continues to get trotted out by every, like, bullshit pundit on mainstream news because he is ridiculous and they can just laugh at him. Th this, by the way, is a... Um, 
a bull lesbian named Rachel, Rachel Meadow, who is going to be uh, playing Nick Fuentes' clip and making fun of him. So the, the, the joy of Nick Fuentes has broken out of our sphere and is now a mainstream sensation of making fun of Nick Fuentes. We've got the leading presidential contender for the Republic. I'm being obtuse on purpose. No, I am not. What, what the fuck do you mean? Saying having sex with women is gay is a, on its face, an absurd statement. If you think that that is some kind of profundity that people should listen to and respect and take seriously you are fucking delusional the emperor has no clothes dog avatar man you have to take a step back and realize nick Fuentes is a 20 something year old boy who has no fucking idea what he's doing he is not your savior he is not going to give your life meaning he is just an informant look at nomination in 2024 this holiday weekend having a nice thanksgiving dinner with kanye west the rapper who just lost all of his corporate sponsorship deals when he started saying he was going to go DEFCON 3 on the Jews. The leading Republican presidential candidate, their last president, Donald Trump, just hosted Mr. West this weekend. Uh, and also this man for a uh, what was apparently a very nice Thanksgiving dinner at the pre former president's home. When you look at these things like uh, abortion, it's popular. People like abortion. Hate it, but it's true. And you can thank the Jewish media for that. Abortion's popular, sodomy's popular, you know, being gay is popular, being a feminist is popular, sex out of wedlock is popular, contraceptives are, that's all popular. That's all, that's not to say it's good, that's not to say I like that. Popular means the people support it, which they do. And, uh, and it sucks and it is what it is, but that's why we need uh, dictatorship. <laughs> that's unironically why we need to get rid of all that. We need to take control of the media or take control of the government and force the people to believe what we believe. That's why we need a dictatorship. Force people to believe what we believe. We need it. The optics. Also, uh, making fun of Nick Fuentes. And Rich Amato, of course, is a sourpuss lesbian. She doesn't know how to laugh at anything. Uh, God, calling her a she is so weird. I'm like, my mind thinks, wait, break, break, break. That is probably a true. And like, no, wait, this Rachel Maddow. She's been around for 20 years at this point. That's not, a, that's a woman. Um, Stephen Colbert also tries to be funny week we learned the former president had dinner at mar-a-lago with kanye west now we know the dinner also included holocaust denier nick fuentes i can't imagine having dinner with someone so disgusting and you have no idea which of those three guys i'm talking about <laughs> now getting there two scoops lads two scoops start the car now, just in case Holocaust denier doesn't get the point across, Fuentes is not a good guy. Wait, is this is Saturday Night Live? Doesn't, doesn't this guy host Saturday Night Live now? Is this Saturday Night Live? In case Holocaust denier doesn't get the point across, Fuentes is not a good guy. He has spread anti-Semitic conspiracies, is considered a white supremacist by the Anti-Defamation League, attended the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville in 2017, and the Stop the Steal rally on January 6th. That is the alt-right EGOT. I thought the Colbert show was was the Daily Show follow-up where he pretends to be a retarded Republican instead of just being a retarded liberal. As in, he got zero hugs as a child. <laughs> now this dinner, this dinner was a multi-course tasting menu of crazy, but we don't know exactly what happened because it's become a real he said, yay said. Because afterwards he posted, we got along great. And Kanye expressed no anti-Semitism. By the way, I want to... I wanna... I want to clarify that because I actually believe Trump when he says that. Um, Trump, from what I remember, this retelling because I, I actually talked about that on the Thanksgiving episode. I talked about how the story went that Trump was talking to them and he was fine, and then at some point he gets called away and comes back and then is desperate to get them the fuck out. I actually believe that Trump had no idea who any of them were, and that at some point, some guy also there at the dinner takes a step away and just sends him like a call and is like, uh, those people you're having dinner with are fucking crazy. You want nothing to do with them. And then he tries to get them the fuck out. Um, like I, I believe Trump's statement, but nobody, nobody in the media does. Where is the part where they clip? Uh, oh, I guess there is no clip. They just talked about this. Oops. I had a lovely dinner with Jeffrey Dahmer. We got along great. Left with all my organs. His written jokes are so bad. All fixed. <laughs> Nick Fuentes guy and the ex-president started getting a lot of criticism, he put out a statement saying, our dinner meeting was intended to be Kanye and me only, but he arrived with a guest whom I had never met and knew nothing about. I thought there was like a, uh, a specific clip they played in the Fuentes, but I guess not. And sorry, I didn't mean to torture you with Stephen Colbert. Anyways, yes, he's getting raked by the media, which is fine. 
like okay media doesn't matter me, me more than anyone i know the media really does not matter they are fools they can be made fun of um the issue is is the ease which with which they make him look retarded um i like i said his his very very aggressive stance against like normal healthy relationships is why i am convinced he's a fed you take this you take you cannot save the white race without white women and he embeds in his in his followers who are really just lost kids i feel like people around his age a little bit younger who need like purpose in life and they have no idea what the fuck to do and they just feel very desperate and alone and they're just like nick fuentes is the only person even trying to make anything and they listen to him and they get yeah fuck women i he can pull up clips I, like look look at what i can do i can go here and i can pull this up and I can show you white women saying retarded shit. If I told you that I was a woman, what would your response be? Good for you. Okay. Like, <laughs> I can like play this clip and I can just be like, white women chat, white women, fuck them. They're retarded. Let's listen to this gay retard white woman on my screen. And then everyone's just like, and it's not, it's just, it's just weak. And it's, it, it, it sabotages them because now they don't. Nick Fuentes personally doesn't know what the fuck to do with women. He just assumes that at some point he'll get married. And then he discusses having kids like it's like a farming chore or something. Like, I guess I have to take care of my cattle now that I am uh, own animals. I have to go out and breed my, my wife in order to accomplish my mission. It's like, that's, that's, that's setting up the people that, that trust Nick Fuentes to have a very miserable life, I think. That's an inaccurate summary of Nick's content. I've watched Nick's content. I've sat down and I remember that there was like a 30 minute long segment where he is, there was a, there, I cannot remember the specifics, but it was a government official. And she was making a point about policy that was set forth by Joe Biden. And every time he wanted to address the actual retarded policy that was being set forth by the Biden government, he got derailed by how much he hated. It was a woman that was delivering the press statement. Like, this is such a woman thing to say, guys. This is like, this is white woman 101. It, like, it took, it was a, like a two minute clip of policy from the Biden administration, and he could not analyze it in one breath without being distracted by how much he wanted that bitch fucking dead. It's like the one time I gave him a serious sentence, I'm like, okay, let's actually listen to Nick Fuentes talk and see what he has to say. And it's just like, no, this, this guy has a very unhealthy relationship with half the white race, 52% of the white race. He cannot function around. And that's not good. You cannot have a savior. Like, like, you, okay. You love Hitler, right? Read the Hitler's quotes about women. You have, um, he has like a take that, like that the women maintain a smaller world inside a bigger world that men cannot maintain without the inner smaller world being taken care of. There is pictures of the NSDAP women's branch with banners that say without children, without future. And like, this is very carefully crafted to incorporate women who then voted for the NSDAP and for Hitler. If you, ex if you exclude women from your policy, if you treat them like cattle, if you treat them as a detriment to you, you will not get half the voting base, which is required for your movement to have any traction. You'll also alienate anybody who happens to be married because they have women in their lives, unless they're Rambot, who also hates his wife and his wife is Jewish. Um, it, 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 I, I cannot, I'm forced to assume that he's either retarded and immature, which is a very likely, or he's also a fed and given lines about how to sabotage his own uh, fan base, which I can also believe. Um, so yeah, if you somehow listen to Nick Fuentes, you have to, you, like, I don't, I'm not going to say you can't listen to Nick Fuentes or you're a bad person, but you have to remember that he is a young boy and he doesn't have a fucking idea what he's talking about. He can be very educated about certain things of policy. He can be very educated about, you know, Jewish history and, and he can have a very strong political opinion that he can defend fervently, but he lacks worldly experience that you would want in a leader. And he does not have a fucking idea of how to incorporate half of his demographic into his policy without just trying to enslave them because he doesn't have a high opinion for women because he has some sort of trauma he's either gay or he doesn't like his mommy and his older sister or something but something's fucking wrong just like destiny maybe i don't know i can't compare him to Destiny. i don't know too much about destiny he's a grown man no he's he's a kid <laughs> i'm sorry to say he's a kid uh 
He does not have he does even if he is even if he was fifty years old, he does not have the worldly experience to understand what the fuck he's talking about. It's like with uh, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is eighty, but he's like a retard because he's never worked a day in his life. He went straight from marching in the streets to being a politician. He has no fucking idea of what a laborer is, what a laborer does, what a laborer needs to get through the day. He's just a retard. And Nick Fuentes in the exact same vein has never worked a fucking day in his life, has only eaten chicken nuggets since he was born, and he has no clue about how the world works and yet he still has managed to engross himself in these people who trust him because he provides them a a beacon that they are really desperate for and there are a lot of desperate people who are under the age of 24 who have no idea what to do with their life or have been given a world which is crumbling that we have received from our, our parents a society that is collapsing and many people are scared and aimless and they don't know what to do and they turn to people like nick fuentes and nick fuentes is a false prophet he will he will offer you disaster in the midst of it and I can evidence this by showing you uh, Kanye West. So Kanye goes on back to the, the actual topic at hand, it goes to Tim Pool. And Tim Pool uh, wants to drag this out for two hours. He gets about 15 minutes of Kanye before Kanye walks off set because he brings him in. And he wants to, it, Tim Pool, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm, try, I'm trying to decide if I should do a poll now or wait. But basically, the, the meeting with Tim Pool goes like this. They fly out on Kanye's personal jet to Tim Pool, and they're in the they're in the room. And Tim Pool wants to go over policy, he wants to go over the campaign. He wants to talk about stuff that's actually important. Now, I don't know anything about Tim Pool. Please don't say I'm like a Tim Pool simp. I have no. All I know about Tim Pool is that he's bald and his cope that his beanie protects him from Antifa, like he's Kent Clark. And when he puts on the beanie and takes it off, he's like a completely different person that nobody can recognize. Is the biggest fucking balding manlet cope that has ever existed. Okay, that is all I know about Tim Pool, but he has Kanye on and he's taking it very seriously. This is a big guest. He, Kanye is running for president, presidential candidate, Kanye West, rap mogul, fashion designer, billionaire, former billionaire, sitting in his office. Let's take this seriously. Let's ask about campaign questions. Let's ask about uh, serious topics that are at stake here. And he sits down and Kanye just says, motherfucking Bix nude, Papa DeBo, dim Jews. How about that? And Temple's just like, um, I guess we're getting into the Jew topic then. I was hoping to talk about policy and politics first, uh, but that's not looking to happen. So after a couple minutes, he's talking to Tim Pool and he's saying, like, the, them Jews have fucked me over and they took all my bank accounts and shit, and now I'm fucking broke and they're trying to throw me in jail. And Tim Pool responds saying, well, I don't think that Jews are a monolith. I don't think that banking is a monolith made up of Jews either. And Kanye literally storms off the, the stage at that point. They've been extremely unfair to you. I Who think. is they, though? We can't say they is, can we? I'm not using the, I don't use the word as the, as the way I guess you, you guys use. I'm, I'm talking about. It is about them, though, isn't it? I mean, because, <laughs> no. and, and because when you think <laughs> about not. it, consider it. In 2018. What do you mean it's not? It, what, what do I mean? Like, uh, uh, okay, so how about, are you leaving? Are you afraid of the press? And then he leaves. And then Milo leaves. And Nick Fuentes leaves as well. I, I want to do a poll. Um, do you think, I'll say ye, because I don't have to pronounce it, walking off was based, and I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it up to your interpretation of if it was based or not for that, for that response. I think, and I'll, I'll let you vote, I'll count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that... There is a time and a place to walk off set. If someone's disrespecting you, if someone's belittling you, if someone's not taking, like if they brought them out, they're like, oh, you're, you're going to be president, huh? Like there's interviews with like um, the directors of bad films where like the, the media pundit is obviously taking the piss and like treating them like a retard. If someone's disrespecting you like that, then sure, leave. Tim Pool seems genuinely like concerned. He has no fucking idea how to address this topic. And, and then Kanye, without, without like being able to, to rebuttal it. That's the big thing. Okay. Let me, let me see what the next slide is. Um, okay, that's the Alex Jones stuff. Get to that. When you are a presidential candidate and you are talking to the press, and by the way, the poll results with uh, 891 votes is 57% says no, 42% says yes. So it's very split without 1,000 votes. I can understand why people would say it's based. Treating the press like shit in general is pretty funny. The issue is that he took a private plane out to meet Tim Pool. So he's just wasting his time. If Tim Pool showed up at his house, like if Tim Pool took all the, the, the time to fly over to his house 
and was sitting there and got his all his camera crew set up like it took three hours for the studio to get set up at his house and then you know temple is disrespecting him and he says pack up your shit get the fuck out of my house i'm not going to have you as a guest that would be a lot more base because then it makes Tim Pool look like a fucking retard, and Tim Pool's time and money are wasted and efforts, and everybody's time and money is wasted, and he just is sitting there holding nothing for it. In this instance, they wasted their time. They come out to have a conversation with somebody who's going to give them a fair chance to explain their position, and if you were educated on what your, what your positions actually are, then you can defend them. You can open the, this Pandora's box of the JQ, which is a very dangerous box, which is a very dangerous box, um, that you should take quite seriously, that you should be quite educated on before you go out st and, and start popping off about it. Because people people are going to challenge you. Everybody, when you start saying things like this, people are naturally going to challenge your opinions. If someone comes out for, in, for any reason. Uh oh. I think that this is just a buffer. Okay. I'll, re I'll restart my opinion uh, for the podcast. I, my YouTube chat thingy has uh, buffered. That's fine. I'll restart my opinion. Um, if you come out with a fringe opinion about anything, you better be prepared to defend it. If you have an opinion that the moon landing is fake, then you better be willing to defend that position. Uh, I'll restart my opinion. Oh, geez. Um, my, if I forgot that out. when Odyssey uh, buffers, it also unmutes itself, which is the best feature that has ever been added to any player ever. Um, so if you come out and you say the moon landing is fake, people are going to ask, how do so many, how do, same with 9-11, say that 9-11 was fake. Well, the big first question is how did so many people keep that a secret? What was the purpose of the lie? Um, how do you know that like they'll come at you with these questions. And if you say, if you have an interview, okay, you're a political pundit or you're like a, who, who would be funny? Trisha Paytas. You're Trisha Paytas. You don't believe that the moon landing is real. You're running for president now. You go on to the Young Turks. Sink Yogurt, friendly to you because you're, you know, good in the circles. You know, you're a, a popular person on the right side of history in Hollywood. And you ask, so, you don't believe that the moon landing was real. Uh, why not? <laughs> I, I personally think it was real. You can't then storm off the set and say, fuck the media, the pro moon landing media. You guys are all in it together. I'm not going to sit here and have you uh, say the, the moon landing was real in my presence. That just makes you look like you can't defend your position. Um, Tim Pool was definitely willing to give him a chance and was asking very, was pushing back in the most polite way possible. So I, I, I I'm, I'm struggling to think of a way that Tim Pool could have handled this better to not insult Kanye West, so that he would not swim off, which in that instance makes him look like a petulant fucking child. And when he is running for president, he should not look like a petulant child that cannot defend his position. And then things got even worse. So this is my position just after the Tim Pool stuff. I'm thinking, okay, so he really doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Like he can't answer these questions. And he has to defer, probably has to, Nick Fuentes doesn't say anything in this entire interview. But then the Alex Jones interview happens and it's like, oh my fucking God, he literally has no idea what the fuck he's doing. Really cool outfit and stuff, and he was a really good architect. And uh, and so you're, this is what I mean by him sounding gay, though. His voice is like bizarre. I love with the with the with the with the, with the, arch, the, the, the look of it. And he didn't kill six million Jews. That's just like factually incorrect. Yeah, let's get the Ronald Reagan clip they showed me yesterday. Sorry, go ahead. Ronald Reagan said that. <laughs> uh, let's pull up. Uh, uh, I need you to get a clip of anything. Find me a clip of literally anything. Ronald Reagan, like that's Alex Jones. Like you, um. It's like a rolling a dice. It's like pull up a random thing from Alex Jones's brain. There's like a 30% median chance that he is going to reference Ronald Reagan in some way. That's just his brain. Random access memory. Whatever the fuck comes up first. The <laughs> fourth was thought. Um, and this is uh, more just random clips. I'm just going to go through all the clips of him in uh, this, this interview with Alex Jones. The, the so-called crime doesn't deserve the punishment. Oh no, is this gonna Ah oh, no, don't do this to me. Because then I would have what did I I thought that's right, you're not Hitler. Okay, let me try Twitter. You're if not, not a Nazi, you don't deserve to be called out and demonized. Well if there is um an issue with this, I can just Oh no, I am not signed in. Oh fuck. Thought that's right, you're not Hitler, you're not a Nazi. Let's just use the the Kiwi Farms version then. This is our clips from the Kiwi Farms. Um, I won't play the Laura Loomer one. Like the main thing that I noticed with Laura Loomer is that she's just there for self-promotion. Unfortunately, Kanye West makes her look sane because again, Laura Loomer comes in with the default perspective. She's not handling this like a super intelligent way. She's coming in and she's asking very mild questions. 
Do you think that this is all Jews? I'm Jewish and I've had deplatforming issues. Why do you think that this is the case? If I'm Jewish, shouldn't I be in on this complot? Milo is also Jewish and yet he's your campaign manager. What? It, like she's asking the most mild questions possible, the most obvious on its face. What do you say to handle this guy uh, responding? And he, he has no response. This is absolutely lit. This is lit, 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 lit. <laughs> By the way, I've only heard a clip of this, and I, when I get to the clip that I remember, um, I will point it out because I, I, my theory of what is happening with this shifts dramatically when I when I saw this. Every human I, I, I tuned out because it actually upset me at that point. Being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it, the most Nazi-like activities I've seen, um, and, and the Nazis, in my view, were thugs that shook people down to a lot of really bad things. But they did good things, too. We're going to stop dissing the Nazis all the time. <laughs> Look at his face. Look at how the hope leaves him when he interrupts to say that. <laughs> I mean, if you... Um, be real, Alex, be real. When they started up the Volkswagen program to give every family in Germany a car, a fancy German car, it was a big deal for the economy. It was the first of its kind. It was real socialism for the people, for the folk, Alex. All the time. Okay, we're, we're going to get to that. You get, I don't... We'll get into that. He's <laughs> just like stammering. Ben Shapiro's cardio is picking up shackles. Uh, Shapiro can tell how much change is in your pocket just from hearing a jingle. Um, Shapiro is just mad that Kyrie won't sign his basketball. Back to you, Alex. Next <laughs> over there, you want to? Hey, hey, I'm not... Okay, this is it. This is it. He's talking about the Jews, and he wants to talk about Benjamin Netanyahu. So he takes out a net and a yoo and he says, this is net and yoo And I'm like, oh my God, he's actually lost his fucking mind. Hey, yay, I'm the head of the Mossad. I'm gonna kill you and take your children away from you. Thanks a lot, Netten. Back to you, Alex. Uh, please turn your phone microphone around, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm definitely uh, overwhelmed here right now. Um, Infowars.com, tomorrow's <laughs> news today. Alex is the man who interviewed uh, Jonathan Yanov and then uh, Jonathan Yanov says something weird and sexual and perverted, and Alex Jones is like, yeah, maybe I do want some trans bussy. <laughs> he just, like, is a sick fuck about it. This guy comes in with the Netanyahu, and Alex Jones is just like, holy shit. And it was at this moment, I actually saw this moment live, and I realized what it is. Milo Yiannopoulos and Nick Fuentes are abusing a mentally handicapped person. The, the, the shit with the net and the yoo Reminds me exactly of Chris Chan doing his Sancho and Rose Chu Lego videos. And I'm thinking, this is the exact same thing as if Chris Chan was a billionaire and made me his campaign manager and had me on Alex Jones' show while he's talking about Sancho and Rose Chu. And then he defers to me to explain what Ukraine is. And I'm just sitting there going, yes, uh, Chris Chan is actually God. And, um, uh, you know, here's here's our opinion about, about Ukraine. And it's like... It's the, it, would be, it would be literally the exact same fucking thing. Um, there, I don't know if this is coming up, but he, he does defer to Nick Fuentes about the Ukraine war. And he, Nick starts running immediate defense for Putin, says that uh, Putin did a speech where he condemned the West as being like Satanists and stuff. And Alex Jones starts to agree and says, yeah, I agree with Putin's opinion about that. I think that we have lost the way. And then every time they cut to Kanye, he's reading Genesis. He is, he's randomly non sequitur, has a Bible open, and he's reading the creation legend from Genesis as if it has relevance. And it's like, this guy got one book of the Bible into the, into the, into the Bible. He got one book in and thinks he's figured everything out because he has lost his fucking mind. And because he has the clout and the money, Nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos, his federal assets are there, number one, to ensure that his campaign is a failure, number two, to elevate themselves, and number three, to make money. That's my take. I think that he is genuinely, um, he, he has problems and he has accident, he has surrounded himself with people who are going to abuse him, uh, to enrich themselves because he happens to have money. And when he no longer has money, he will be completely and totally abandoned by them. Book of Moses called Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
this. Yeah. This this is apropos of nothing. He has Laura Loomer on the phone, and she asked him a question about the Jews, and he's reading Genesis, the first book of Genesis. And it's like, what the fuck does this have to do with the Jews? They have the Genesis book. It's in the it's in the the, the Hebrew Bible too. Earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. That's where we start. And they know that. That's why Prometheus shows that. All right, Laura, thank you so much. Oh, he's going to go? i just keep playing this. I'm leaving for now. Do, do. Look, there's the Yoohoo. It's Net and Yoohoo, and he's doing... Oh, b -b -b hold up. Sorry, I, I, it's driving me crazy. Uh, Quickville Guardian. Okay, let's get that. Let's find a Lego video. Here we go. Did try to do that for them, and now to just in and a weird. Where's his baby voice at? Oh, this makes. I would be. I need one where he's doing the baby voice at. He usually moves the guy when he does that. Creator blocked us. Finally, finally yeah. be able to bring my spot here to see one nine seven. There, there, there's Netanyahu. It's the same guy. It's the same. It's the same voice. It's another meeting, and then I'm gonna say something. All right. You're not only an artist, you're a comedian. But, but Nick, that's what I'm getting at here is, is that, <laughs> is, 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 is that it was a, uh, it, just, it doesn't even matter. I, I just, I mean, there's, well, listen, there's fluoride in the water killing us all. They're injecting us with GMO. Oh, here's a question. And I'm not, a, I'm not an apologist for Israel. I'm trying to be balanced here. And I believe in the First Amendment. I believe in free speech. I believe, endorse you, say whatever you want. Israel has. Um. CNN says why people are evil Nazis, so, I mean, I, I, I disagree with both statements, but I get the yeah, Trojan. I don't, I don't like the word evil next to Nazis. He's I so think. frustrated. He's so, fr look at, I've never seen Alex Jones visibly pained by someone else talking. To Nazis, I think we need to look at. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Just because you don't like one group doesn't mean the other. Look, I fine. love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well i have to disagree with that all right but listen we're gonna go to break i'm 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 the i'm the crazy one here we're all crazy the whole world's crazy and and the whole power structure's coming down this is absolutely lit this is lit 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 number one show in the world right now everybody's tuned in everywhere you're not a nazi you don't deserve to be called that and demonized well i i see i i see good things about hitler also the Jew, I love everyone, and Jewish people are not going to tell me, you can love, um, you know, us, and you can love what we're doing to you with the contracts, and you can love what we're, you know, what we're pushing with the pornography. What the but fuck was that clip for? This guy that invented highways, invented the very microphone that I use as a musician, you can't say out loud that this person ever did anything good, and I'm done with that. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. For the ADL, they are going to have to listen up. What we did is we brought Netanyahu with us. Oh, I already saw this part. You know, like one of the big topics right now is all of the pedophilia advertisement. And my take on that is, you know, there's, there's one place in the Bible where it says God sees sin differently, and there's another place where it says, uh, you yeah, know, let me get out my phone. I can, like, really pull up the exact <laughs> thing it says in the Bible. The general gist, and we'll get back to it after the five-minute break, is that you have to uh, stay strict to everything and remove as much sin as possible in order to serve God. And when people look at pornography, when a, when you, a grown man is looking at a grown woman have sex on camera you're still looking at someone's daughter and you're looking at a lot of times someone that is the product of pedophilia so people will engage that's that's a very feminist take he did not get that from nick fuentes there's not a fucking chance that he got that from nick fuentes he he definitely looked up anti-pornography arguments on his own and found that from like a feminist uh, uh, author because there is zero chance in fucking hell that nick fuentes told him to say that or told him that, uh, that information and going to strip clubs or looking at pornography but then they the moral compass is like oh my god Look at Dude, we got it from Kim. Okay, called it, called it. The pedophiles, but in a way, anybody who looks at pornography is a form of a uh, of a pedophile also. 
let's let's bank it all in it's very simple we're not going to be talking about all this moral code and these standards right here is either christ said so or Christ said no. Yay, powerful information. I totally agree with you. Back in 60 seconds, to join over 400 radio stations. Nick Point has yeah. the studio. Everybody, tell everybody you know, tune in. Very interesting. I mean, there's there, the issue is not that everything that he says is totally disagreeable. The issue is that he looks and sounds fucking insane. And I, I am forced to assume that, like, Nick, if Nick Fuentes was gro uh, groping, grifting this guy, um, and deciding everything for him, he would not tell him to do this. He would tell him to take it seriously because that's how you make more money. And this is this is him, and Nick Fuentes is just kind of there because he's going to get paid for it. Um, by the way, the mask he's wearing, I'm a, I'm assuming I'm forced to assume this is like a, a reference to the Balenciaga stuff. Is a Balenciaga gimp mask. So he went out of his way to buy like a high fashion Balenciaga gimp mask to wear uh, to this this meeting, and it's it's very bizarre. You forget that Nick Fuentes also goes on his own show with a Yee mask on. There are pictures of Nick Fuentes and a Gimp mask. I cannot find any pictures of Nick Fuentes and a Gimp mask. I think you're lying to me. I think you're lying to me, buddy boy. On his Instagram? Is it like a recent thing? Nick Fuentes has an Instagram? No, it's old. Huh. It is it is bizarre how he was like dancing around in like like Kanye's merchandise and shit trying to get on this train. And then he gets it. It's like he really did just suck that dick hard enough to get to get into that position. And actually it took Milo Yiannopoulos to get it done. Just very bizarre. I mean, I can understand you want to support him because it's funny. Go for it. Whatever. And I don't want to say <clears throat> that there's zero chance that he wins because People would have said that about Trump at this time in, in the 2016 election. Um, but I'm hard pressed to take him seriously because even though Trump said outrageous things at the time, he, he still took the campaign like seriously and he didn't, he never did anything as outright fucking juvenile as the Netanyahu shit. And, and one of the things that Trump was always good at, um, and one of the reasons why he won his election is that he surrounded himself with very intelligent and capable people, much, much like Hitler, by the way. Hitler was good at selecting advisors that complemented his skill set so that he could, he could make a, um, he could win. And he knew, like, for instance, um, th there's a long history between the rise of the NSA, NSDAP and uh, President Hindenburg, who oversaw the end of the Weimar Republic. Um, Hindenburg was not an endorser of. Hitler. He did not support the Nazi party at all, but Hitler stayed on his good side and uh, played politics well and then always honored Hindenburg as, as um, a, a war hero and a capable leader. So he, even though they had severe like political disagreements, he never like shit on this guy because he was important. And that, that, that's, that is politics. And I don't, I don't see any of that wit, any of that intelligence that you would see from someone trying to become a, a leader of the free world um, from Kanye West. I don't know. There are groupers in my chat trying to explain to me like how Nick Fuentes and Kanye, you think a 24 year old Mexican boy and an insane man who has lost his fucking mind and is running around in a gimp mask with a fucking net and a yoo-hoo making veiled references to the president of Israel is going to, to save you. <laughs> Dude, please. Realize how fucking insane that is. It's it's a real long shot. I'm not gonna say it's impossible because you can't quote this, but that's fucking crazy. And I, I'm all for crazy stuff, but I try to be pragmatic about it. Like, okay, like if I have to take an L because Nick Fuentes is now the supreme leader of the United States via Kanye West, fine, go for it. But realistically, after Netanyahu reading Genesis, like, mm, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard pressed, man. That's really hard. Crazy like a frog. 
a political thing. It's so bizarre. I really feel like it's um because I know that when someone says anything like Nick Fuentes or not Nick Fuentes, Nick Ricardo says anything bad about Fuentes, he gets swatted. Um, they they talk to each other in Telegram. They flood the forum all at once. They join groups and try to subvert it. And it's like it's like it's never like a it's never like a, a intelligent response. It's just like we disagree. Go for it. And then by the way, he got banned from Twitter. So, and and this is also fascinating just by itself because what got him banned from Twitter was that he posted a picture of what appears to be a, a Star of David interlaced with the swastika, as if to imply that Jews are the real Nazis, which X are the real Nazis is probably my least favorite retard meme. It's like, it's like the most, like, you, you, have, you have something labeled objective evil, and then you're like, actually, the, the thing I don't like is the real objective evil. So they are the real Nazis. It's, it's very low IQ shit. But he posts this, and then, as the Times of Israel reports, Musk kicks Kanye West off of Twitter after he posts Star of David merged with the swastika. Artist suspended following tirade in which he lauded Hitler and the Nazis. I tried my best, new company chief says, but West again violated the rule against incitement to violence. So that rule is fucking retarded. Um, this is not incitement to violence. Uh, I think and he's trying to say, like, it's a culmination of everything that he's been saying recently is incitement to violence. Um... But Elon, uh, Twitter actually posted a conversation. Elon, like, DM'd him and said, like, bro, you're going too far. And then Kanye just, like, fuck you, bitch. And then he got banned. And by the way, in case you need absolute fucking proof that Kanye West is not a genius, he posts this photo. Number one, he takes a photo of his computer monitor because he doesn't know how to screenshot. And it's Photoshop. And the image there, you would assume there's a Star of David and the, and the swastika in Photoshop. <clears throat> so... Kanye West must have designed this. He felt very inspired to say that the Jews are the real Nazis. So how does he go about... Um, so he, he designed this, this intricate thing to represent this idea that he wants to push. However, what he actually did is this. You go to google.com and you type in swastika start of David, and you'll get news reports about Elon Musk. But then you go over here, and you'll see Wikimedia Commons, the Raelian symbol. And then you go to the Wikipedia article for realism, and it's a UFO cult from France but they had a bizarre swastika Star of David icon as, as their symbol. So Kanye West literally plagiarized an existing cult symbol by Googling Star of David swastika and then pasted it into Photoshop and made it black and then posted... The, then he couldn't figure out how to screenshot the fucking thing that he had done. So he just took his phone and took a camera shot of it and then posted that to Twitter. And that's what got posted. So you want to think Kanye is like on some ninth level 10,000 IQ shit. The motherfucker plagiarized a UFO cult and then uh, and then took a <laughs> took a phone shot of it and posted that. So you can see like the reflection shit. Just I'm hard pressed to say that this is some 9,000 IQ Nick Fuentes masterminded government takeover, hostile takeover of the free world to instill Catholic uh, uh, religious world order. I'm pretty sure this is a retarded man who has brain damage from either um, genetic illness or illness complicated by drug abuse or something, uh, and he is now losing his fucking mind, and Nick Fuentes and Miley Yiannopoulos think this is a sinking ship, but there's a lot of gold on it still. We're going to plunder this motherfucker, and then we're going to load up our life raft, and we're going to get off with new fans, new clout, more prominence, and some money to, to make things uh, make things better for us in the future. SSRI brain damage is real. Look it up. Oh, yeah, that's right. He also had, like, behavioral issues that he took SSRI for us, and now I'm sure that he's uh, got complicated, especially if he was taking drugs. Well, I mean, I, it seems like a perfectly reasonable take to me. However, there are, there are cat boys among us who disagree. Josh is afraid of the first black president. That's true. <laughs> I was okay with the Hawaiian guy, um, half Hawaiian, half Kenyan, um, <laughs> but but the first black president, I don't think we're ready as a society yet. <laughs> um, however, among among the, the many people, happy, it's good for white people to see, dude. dude. <laughs> I can't believe that's like your thought. Like, it's so good for white people to see a deranged 
brain damage black man on Alex Jones making baby voices for Annette and Yuhu to talk about Judaism. That doesn't make it seem like a complete fucking fabrication by an insane person at all. That makes it seem like the most logical possible con conclusion as to why he's lost his money, motherfucker. You show that to my mom. My mom's like, hmm, he makes some salient points about Benjamin Netanyahu through this uh, masquerade. This is uh, an infu a, a delicate infusion of comedy and information. It really is take. It, it really is persuasive. I now believe that Hitler had some good ideas. Like, no, motherfucker. You show somebody who is, like, set in their ways, this crazy motherfucker, and the supposed neo-Nazis sitting next to them, and, like, this guy has has had some serious problems in his life and that he's now working through them in the worst way possible. Nobody's going to be like, hmm, my eyes are open now. I see that the Jews have really taken things away from him. I see a man self-destructing. I don't think that the Jews have to do anything. I think that this is every company on Earth naturally wanting to distance themselves from an unhinged lunatic who is uh, committing suicide very slowly. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. I know we're all desperate for a win here, but this is not, I don't think that this is going to be the, the like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll frame this, I'll frame this in a way to contradict myself. What could Kanye have done to make this topic a public point of discourse in a way that would be beneficial? There are many people in the black community who do not like Jews. You have Minister Louis Farrakhan. He is the leader of a, of a weird, um, church it's technically like a i think it's like a christian church called nation of islam it's a black church and louis farrakhan is somebody who is very prominent for being virulently anti-semitic you can have if you have a conversation a, a, a real human conversation between farrakhan and kanye west that's a problem you have two black people talking about jews in a way that black people understand and they're very popular kanye and that message is going to go through the black community and that is going to cause a lot of fuss then, of course, the media is going to report on this to condemn it. But then what's the media doing? They're exposing these conversations to white people as well. That is, an, If he knew what he was talking about, if he knew his history, if he knew what was actually going on, and he has been coached and educated, and they're rehearsing debates, Nick Fuentes is asking questions, Milo Yiannopoulos playing devil's advocate, and they're really trying for this. That is something that could have happened that would have, and no Wilcox, of course, very serious, you know, playing, you know, doesn't have to be super formal debate, but taking the subject matter seriously, as you would I hope they, that they would, that would have the opportunity to commit and, and who knows maybe after this they'll pivot and they'll take it seriously and do shit like that and kind of like reassert it in a way that actually intelligently brings it to the, to the conversation but this shit is not a w this shit is not going to make people think differently this shit is going to submit people in their shoes because you think about who are when you when you talk to a normal person what is a person who sympathizes with the uh the third right you're going to think of like the kkk you're going to think of hicks you're going to think of retard cousin fuckers in the south who wear hoods and call themselves grand dragon and are just like them fucking them fucking Jews just taking over everything. I call it the Zionist occupied government because they they run the Federal Reserve. Like you're just gonna think of like a fucking slow witted boorish moron, and and that and this Kanye shit is not gonna augment that positively. It's gonna compound it and make it say, yeah, it actually is fucking retards who believe this shit. Uh, and I hope you hope you understand that. I don't know. I I, I, I I'm very hard pressed to be like, oh wow, this. Wow, this is really, he's really putting, you know, good on him for believing what he does and going out there and fighting for it. Like, I just see like a, a self destruction. And just because he says something that is occasionally, you know, out there but agreeable with, it does not mean that he is, you know, a warrior um, for your cause. And I, I'm sorry, but like I said on, on post, there, there is no hero. There is no person, Elon Musk, Donald Trump, Kanye West, Nick Fuentes, has there, there is no hero that's going to rise up and be like, Tally Ho, we are. We're going to we're going to save the white race together. You're waiting for nothing, unfortunately, and it's definitely not Kanye. Cope. This guy. That's that's you know Chuck Mangione. You're a troll. Post is cringe. Look, I get left alone on it. That's all I care about. If it becomes an issue, I'll switch over to Chud Buds. But for right now, nobody bothers me. One person who does believe that Kanye West is the savior of the white race is Ethan Ralph. Uh, talk, speaking of inbred retard cousin fuckers, um, we got Ethan Ralph. <laughs> Yee, or sorry, I have to, I have to, if I want to do the Ethan Ralph voice, I have to say it correctly. Yay said, put some respect on my name, bitch ass Tim Pool. Tim Pool getting dominated by Yee, or by Yay, sorry. Breaking, Yay got up and walked out of the Tim Pool interview after dominating the entire time. 
Thank you for providing, or this is to Jimmy Kimmel. This is Ethan Ralph talking to Jimmy fucking Kimmel. Thanks for prov proving you watched my show right last night, rat. Also, this is one of the funniest things I've seen all year. The audience is laughing along with Nick. He should have Kimmel's job. Yay. You should come on the kill stream, baby. And then there's a picture of uh, Yay sitting at the Resolute desk in the Oval Office as president of the United States of America. Well, shit. I, I sure hope that all that, that deep throating from my buddy Ethan Oliver Ralph of the Kill Stream on Cozy.tv. Nowhere else, buddy. Nowhere else, baby. No, it's on the Cozy.tv. Uh, I sure hope it pays off when he gets that big yay guest appearance that he is really putting in his back for. You know what I mean? Breaking down his knees to get, you know what I'm saying? After all his his indent his servitude to, to Nick Fuentes, surely he can break him off a little crumb and get him in with yay. It would be the, the break that he really needs, and it would help support his child. Support his child, actually, because he's got more than one now, unfortunately. <laughs> Stop sneezing. Can't I can't stop. I won't stop. <laughs> Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.